we work some with big data. Mostly we work with large international organizations. We do strategy, coalition building, new program development. We help organizations get into new areas of global health. So we've been working at NCDs for about seven years with an emphasis on women's cancers. Before they became popular. Uh, well, you know, the, at the time there were a number of researchers working on it, but it was this, this moment of pass-off between the research community and the implementation community. And our, our, one of our specialties is working in advocacy, so we really saw that we needed to be pushing that forward as quickly as possible. So we've been working on the ac access to HPV vaccine and expanding access to cervical screening and preventive treatment, and increasingly on breast cancer and other issues that particularly affect women and non-communicable diseases. We work with large international organizations, so American Cancer Society, UICC, uh, CRUK is one of our, one of our uh, close supporters. We work with organizations that work traditionally in global health, like Family Health International or MSH or PSI. And we help those organizations sort of rethink how they're applying their skills and their, and their capacities in global health to what we like to call emerging areas of global health, but are actually have been staring us in the face for some time, which is the non-communicable diseases. The hot challenge, the burning challenge, the challenge that we're all sitting on as Coles is really figuring out what to do when the rubber hits the road. I mean, the NCD community has been based in advocacy, either patient advocacy in, in developed countries or in getting the issue of non-communicable diseases or cancer on the international agenda. Now, these are not organizations themselves who have the capacity to deliver programs or the capacity to deliver services. So really working with, and you see many people, clinicians, nurses, um, you know, people who, who can actually deliver the services, that's a real challenge. And figuring out how to mobilize existing health infrastructures to deliver the services and the programs needed, that, that's really what we need to do. We know, we know what we need to do in some cases, the challenge is really doing it at this point. How are we going to fund this? Well, that's another, that's another challenge that we're working on currently, particularly in the area of cervical cancer. One of the things we really need to understand is what it's going to take to do. Um, American Cancer Society just did a really interesting project to come up with a cost of action around cervical cancer. We need to understand the same for other issues in women's cancers and in cancer more broadly. Until we have a numbers figure, we can't really advocate for moving beyond what we have now. But what we really need, I think, is that NCDs are not going to play the same way that we've seen HIV or malaria, or tuberculosis or maternal health move forward in global health. These are issues that particularly will fall on governments and on families. And the pressure that these, already, these diseases already have on families is catastrophic. So we need to, to look to a totally different strategy to fund NCDs. I think if we wait around and think that we're going to see the same thing happen, whether HIV, or maternal mortality and hope that we can do the right things, pull the right switches or turn on the right lights and see this happen in the same way. I, I just don't think that's realistic, both in terms of global financing and in terms of the, really the, the, the burden and the weight of these diseases. There is causality, there are opportunities for synergy, whether across NCDs or with existing health programs that we see you know, ongoing today. And a group, there's an organization that we work closely with called the Task Force for NCDs and Women's Health. And we're looking specifically at how we can pinpoint opportunities for integration with existing programs. We can't rely on that entirely. We haven't worked on, on as you mentioned, the opportunities to use simple medicines like aspirin as a prevention tool. Uh, our work has been more on the emerging technologies, whether in maternal and neonatal health or in, in cancer prevention through vaccines. But there's a lot you can do with very little. But aspirin and tamoxifen will actually prevent a lot of cancers. And, and so might statins. That's very true. That's very true. And those, those are important things that as a community we need to start looking at and figuring out how we can work together on. Absolutely. What's burning for me in this meeting is, is the question of translation. So when you come to these meetings, it's exciting to see your colleagues. It's exciting to feel the energy. Everyone's in agreement. There's a momentum. We need to move beyond. So how do we engage people in the governments, the countries in which we're working? How do we engage people who don't necessarily care about cancer or who have been affected personally but don't yet understand how they can play a role? So I think the question, as you mentioned yesterday in the WHO session, the question is translation, the question is uptake, and the question is scale. And these meetings are super important in terms of giving people clarity and energy, but they're not enough. They're really just the beginning of the work that needs to be done afterwards.